What's going on, man? I wanted to talk about the impact that faith has had on my life and what faith can do for you. My journey with faith has been an interesting one. Throughout my life, I was always taught, you know, Jesus Christ is God. And for a large part of my life, I was cool with it. I was just a kid and I was like, oh yeah, Jesus is, is God. Yes, great. Okay, cool. But I never truly dug deep into what that meant. And as time went on, you know, middle school, high school, I started to doubt my faith. And eventually I got to the point where I completely doubted my faith. I had almost no belief that God was real. I was just like, all right, I think science is actually disproving God. And and one day, because I was in a dark place, you know, I, I was not happy. One day I decided, all right, I need to just pray one more time. And this prayer will decide whether or not I put my faith in Christ or not. And on that day, I'll never forget it. I heard the audible voice of God and I felt the power of God, the love, the Holy Spirit. I've never felt that much love in my life ever before. And through that, I remember falling down to the floor and it was like, I don't know if you've ever been on those like rides at the carnivals or, or an amusement park where it's spinning really fast and you can't even lift your head like above the wall or something. I couldn't lift my head off the floor. That's how much power and pressure was on me. But I didn't feel like there was pressure. I knew it was there. I couldn't even move, but it felt like all the burdens were just lifted off my shoulders and I felt more love than I've ever felt before. And from that day, I have been a follower of Jesus Christ, and I try to relay his message through my videos. And, um, well, I'm going to just teach you some of the things that I've learned through my uh, not so prolonged journey through faith, but definitely um, a strenuous one because this has been one of the most important things in my life since then. Okay, let's turn to the Gospels. Now, I want, I want to talk to you guys real quick, okay? I have it pulled up right here. This is salt and the light. This is Matthew 5, 14 through, yeah, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. With this YouTube channel, this is really one of the reasons why I've made it. I'm going to read you the verse. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So all the good things that I do, anything that I succeed in, anything that I do well in, it's not me, me, me. That's what it used to be. That's what it used to be. And look where that got me. Now, it's all about giving glory to my father who is in heaven because I wouldn't have any of this stuff without him. I would be nothing without him. So, I'll go back now. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff I have highlighted on a lot of pages. I've done a lot of research. I've read a lot of the Old Testament I've read all the Gospels. I'm reading it. Like, I've been busy. <laughs> but um, I, I got this Bible. This is the first Bible I actually, like, have for myself. I got that after I was saved. And that has been truly a blessing. So I recommend to any of you out there that are trying to grow your faith to do two things. First of all, pray. Because faith is a gift from God. He gives you the opportunity to love him. He gives you that. He doesn't force you to love him. That's why he's such a loving, perfect God. He doesn't force you, but you choose to love him. He's not a dictator that's forcing you to do anything. You have a free will. So first of all, pray for faith, pray for boldness, pray for strength. And secondly, get yourself a Bible. I always have my Bible next to either like all my nightstand over there next to my bed here, or right where that mirror area is. I always have it next to my bed because I like to read it before bed or just, I have the Bible app on my phone. I look at verses there. That has just deepened my faith being in the word. 
Also, uh, I've done a lot of research on which sector of Christianity is the right way to go. Of course, all the ways that lead to Jesus Christ are, of course, good, you know, uh, whether it be Catholicism or uh, Bap Baptist churches and um, Lutheran, is Lutheran? <laughs> but anyway, um, whichever way leads to Jesus Christ is good. But something that I found to be very interesting was that when you look at the original text of the Bible, when you look at the earliest church teachings, you will find something that is very interesting. I don't know if you've ever heard of this before, but there's something called universalism. And through universalism, what that means is that one day, I'm going to sum it up in one sentence, one day, everybody will be saved. Now, because for a large part of my life, I had a lot of confusion as to how we can say in one sentence, God is an all-loving, perfect God, but then in the very next statement say, oh, but if you do not believe in God, if you reject him, he'll put you in hell for eternity. I could never get wrap my head around that. Why would a perfect, all-loving God judge you and send you to hell for eternity? for the mistakes you made in a limited lifetime. I know that what I'm saying right now is against a lot of the modern Christian teachings, so I may get a lot of backlash for this, but this is, I, I, this is my truth. But that does not go against anything of what the Bible is teaching, such as Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody gets to the Father except through him. That does not contradict the fact that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, right? Every knee will bow. Not just the people that are in heaven. No, every knee will bow. God will be all in all. You might want to research on your own the possibility of universalism. I went through it. <laughs> uh, there's no other way to say it. I went through it. Uh, I, I, I was in just a bad place mentally. Um, nothing felt good physically like food didn't taste good colors didn't look saturated nothing felt good because i was just in spiritual pain and there was a void in my heart that i could never get rid of until i put my faith in christ and that's why i say it in my videos but it hasn't been perfect it really hasn't um if we were to delude ourselves into thinking it would be we would be foolish because even Jesus Christ himself, he could have came here on a throne. He could have had, you know, everything perfect because he's God himself. But instead, Jesus Christ came here humbly and he was a servant. So, I went to, now this is, you know, I didn't, I went, I grew up in the Catholic Church. So I went to like the CCD and everything. Um, but I haven't been in church really since my research has been self research but i was really going through it and i felt like i had nowhere else to turn to so one day i i went and i visited a priest something that i'd never really done and i i, I went there nobody else is there except for the people that like kind of work at the church i went up to the door knocked on the door and this, this lady answers, she says, yeah, what, what's going on? I said, hey, um, do you have any priests that I could talk to? And she said, oh, okay, yeah, they're, they're actually in the office over there. So I had to go all the way, walked across the street there, knock on the door, walk in, and the person at the desk says, oh, this is the one day out of the week the priest is not here. I said, okay. She goes, do you want me to call him? No, 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 I'll just come back tomorrow. So as soon as school ended, I rushed back to the church and I went back to the office and I look and I see a sign on the door and it says they won't be available until like later in the afternoon. So I sat there for about an hour and a half just waiting because I, I just felt like I needed to talk to him. I needed to talk to a priest. I didn't know where else to go. Finally, uh, I was let in. I had the opportunity to talk to the priest. 
I'm very grateful for the conversation. I don't think it solved everything, but I do know I got at least one lesson from it. And the biggest lesson that I got was something that he said to me that was very profound. The priest said to me, he said, you know, the Bible has a very interesting theme. The theme of the Bible is that you will fall many times, but through Christ, we can get up again. And that really hit me. That really did. Because as humans, we have this idea that we're going to get up on our own. You know, like, all right, well, I'll, I got it. I got it. Leave me alone. I got it. I'll figure it out. But it's so much easier when you just put it in God's hands. And I've had so many moments in my life where, for whatever reason, I just put it off. Like, okay, I don't need to pray about it. I'll pray about it later if it gets bad. No, like, pray about it now. Pray about it now. When you pray, maybe it won't solve the problem directly, but what it will do is that it will show you that the problem is not as big as you think it is. And God is bigger than all of our problems. Amen. I had a bit of a, I'm not saying I'm a prophet or something. I'm not going that far. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's relax here. I'm not. But I had a bit of a spiritual revelation that scared me a little bit because of how it all happened. So I was reading the Bible, I was praying, and this theme really kept coming back to me. The phrase, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. That kept repeating throughout my day, whether I was talking to one of my family members, whether I was reading the Bible, I felt like every other verse said the word, do not be afraid. And I heard this voice in my head saying, do not be afraid. I thought that was odd. So I started to pray about it. And then I prayed again. Then I prayed again. And while I was praying, I heard this, this voice say, pick up that book over there. And let me show you what that book was. It's this book right here. Norman Vincent Peale, Positive Thinking Every Day. That voice said to me, pick up that book and turn to today's date. Now, this book has a collection of different, like, positive things to do on each day. And the day was September 17th of this year. So this is quite recent. And what happened next made me throw the book out of my hands out of fear. I heard that voice, and I turned to today's date, which was September 17th. Do not be afraid to be afraid. I read that and I remember I, I threw the book onto my bed like this. I was terrified. And I kept reading it over and over. Don't be afraid to be afraid. What does that mean? And as I kept questioning it, as I kept praying about it, I got this, this feeling in my heart to call my cousin Nick. He's been in a few of the videos. So I said, okay, I guess I got to call Nick. And we had a long discussion about it. And it was funny because I asked him a question. I said, you know, I, this is weird, but I've just had this, this possible spiritual thought here. Have you been afraid of anything recently that's been like weighing on your conscience? And we had a discussion and there was. And it was a very long conversation. It was a great conversation. And we then discovered what this was trying to say. Don't be afraid to be afraid. God was telling me, do not be afraid, which I understood. But then when he said, don't be afraid to be afraid, what he's saying here is that you don't even have to fear fear itself. Fear nothing. Don't be afraid of being afraid. Don't be afraid of messing up. Don't be afraid of sinning because I'm always with you. Now, I'm not perfect. I just pray that the Holy Spirit is speaking through me. But that's what I got. And so what I got to say to you is through your life, through basketball, through any endeavor that you get into, pray about it, put it in God's hands and work hard and understand that all the good things that you do, you have a choice. You have a choice either to 
put it towards your ego, build yourself up, or give glory to your God, your Father who is in heaven. So that is the choice that you have. And to those that are unsure about whether or not Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, I would just ask you to ask yourself a question. If you were to think of a perfect, loving God, and you would also think of universalism, right? Because I, I truly do think that is the truth. Wouldn't it make sense that God loves his children so much that he wants them to be with him in heaven? And I don't think you understand how profound it is that I'm seeing this happen more and more. People that aren't Christians that just give one prayer. They say, Lord, if you are real, help me. Those are the exact words I said. And this was before all this stuff was happening, like on YouTube and all the social media stuff. I feel like there's been like a bit of a revival with Christianity, but that's what I said. And I was never told to say that. That's just what I said. I said, Lord, if you are real, I will serve you, but just please help me. And that he did. So bottom line, I'm going to finish it off with this. If you wouldn't mind, I'll just pray with you right now. You can bow your head, close your eyes, do whatever is comfortable for you. But that's not as important as what I'm about to say. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus Christ, please bless this individual for taking the time out of their day to pray with you right now. And Lord, please open their eyes to your truth, your light, your goodness, and help them. And please forgive them of their sins, for they are sorry. They want to repent in your mighty name. Please educate them on your love. Please educate them on your life. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I know this is a very different style, but this is something that I think is more important than basketball, believe it or not. I love y'all boys. And also, I just want to say... It has been basically the one year anniversary of this channel. I started, my first video was on October 30th of 2023. It is now November 6th of 2024. And we have amassed over 10,000 subscribers. I'm going to be able to monetize this channel once I turn 18. And it's a beautiful thing. And I'm forever grateful for all of you. I'm grateful that God has been with me. God bless y'all. But as always, keep God first. Good luck, bro.